has begun A good work in you Being confident Of this very thing Being confident Of this very thing That he who has begun A good work in you My God will perform it He will complete it Until the day Of Jesus Christ Until the day Of Jesus Christ Yeah God will perform it, He will complete it, until the day of Jesus Christ, until the day of Jesus Christ. My God will perform it He will complete it Until the day Of Jesus Christ Until the day Of Jesus Christ Confident in the Lord I'm confident Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it and be glad in it. That's right. Praise God. Praise God. You know, um, I was just thinking of that scripture that says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. And just hear the birds tweeting and it's a windy day. Just reminds you of praising the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God yeah. is good. Yeah. So we've been, you know, we like to talk about rising up with confidence and in this segment we want to first of all go into the scripture of Philippians 1 6 hmm. and the song we just sang comes from that scripture I'd like to take you to that scripture let's turn there for a moment confident in the Lord yeah it's good to have confidence in Jesus hmm. you know he'll never leave you nor forsake you that's yeah. the amazing thing about the Lord, especially when we yeah. know who we are in Christ Jesus. That's right. We can be confident in the Lord at any time. Mm. Yeah, maybe you like to read that scripture in Philippians 1 6. Yeah. It you says, know, it's, Yeah, it's a really good thing to walk in confidence because when you have the Lord inside of you, you can be assured that no matter what comes your way, you can overcome it because mm. His grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. That's what the scripture says. Mm. Let's read Philippians 1.6. Yes. It says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm. I really love that verse because it says, you know, God, he will, whatever he starts in your life, he's going to finish it. Mm. He's not going to you know, just say, well, you do it on your own and I'm not going to help you. Yeah. God says, I'm always going to be with you, no matter what comes your way. Yeah. That's what That's I love right. about that. And, um, you know, the word confident there means, it means to be persuaded of something, mm. to have an inward certainty that you really trust and assure. Yeah. And today we want to encourage you to rise up with confidence. It doesn't matter what comes your way. 
when you have mm. the inner assurance of Jesus, you will rise up yeah. and say, Lord, I will boldly declare the Lord is my helper. Mm. I will boldly declare that He is my helper. Yeah. I will not be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, anything that you're doing in life, you need to be confident in yeah. it. And no matter, you know, with, whether you're doing a sports mm. thing or you know, an exam at school, you have yeah. to be confident about it or a job or something. Right. You have to be confident. That's but, right. But, you know, being confident in the Lord will assure you that you don't have to be afraid mm. of how anything turns out. Yeah. And you may be asking, you know, where can I get this confidence from? Well, let me encourage you. This confidence comes from the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Mm. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, He will never speak of Himself. He will only speak as He hears the Father. Mm. And that's always truth. Yeah. That's what I love about God. You know, He won't you know, say a lie to you and expect you to believe Him. Mm. He'll always speak the truth. Yeah. That's the reason we can rise up with confidence. Mm. You know, another thing that really stands out to me from this verse is that God begins and finishes the work that He started in you. Yeah. He always it's does. a good work. Yeah. It says here, it's a good work. And you know, I'm reminded of that scripture that says, you know, looking unto Jesus, as the author and finisher of our faith. Mm. He will perfect it. Yeah. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. And another, yeah. like you said, the meaning of confident is to be persuaded. Mm. And in 2 Timothy 1.12, the Apostle Paul, he mentions that I'm not ashamed because I know whom I have believed in. And he says, I'm persuaded that God, whom I know, is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. And so Paul is saying here that, you know, regardless of whatever things he went through and suffered, he says, I'm not ashamed mm. because I know God yeah. whom I believe in. Yeah, you know, in fact, Paul, when he was writing these things in the book of Philippians, he was in a prison. And that's, you know, when you think of a prison, you think of loneliness, you think of it's hard. But Paul was writing encouraging words, even in a prison cell. Yeah. And it says that many were bold to speak the word of God mm. as they start to read his letters and see his life. Yeah. And truly, the outward circumstances don't have to determine your confidence. You can have confidence in the Lord no matter where you are, mm. because that comes from inside. Because it's who you know it's who you that know. makes a difference. Yeah, and it's, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Paul said he, knew, he knows, knows the Lord and that's whom he believes in. Mm. And what does it mean to know the Lord? It simply means to know what his word says about yeah. him. And his word says that he's our savior, mm. he's our redeemer, he's our healer, yeah. our provider. And there's a lot, you know, in the word that mentions about God. Right. And so when we know, and we can put our confidence in the Lord right. when we know who he is. And knowing the Lord is to have a personal relationship with him. Yeah. I mean, that relationship comes, I think, in any relationship, it takes time to build trust because mm. you got to go through the process, you know, of knowing the person and building up that trust. Mm. And as you build trust with the Lord, you can be assured that He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. Like it says in Proverbs, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Mm. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your steps. That's right. Praise God. And you yeah. also said, you know, our confidence in the Lord is not determined or based on external circumstances. Mm. And even, you know, in Romans 8, it says, I'm persuaded that neither life nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, and all these other things that are mentioned here, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing. It doesn't matter what comes your way. You can be assured that God's going to be on your side. Yeah, and He loves yeah. us. He loves us so much. You know, Philippians 1.20, it says, you know, Paul is writing and he says, This is my highest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Mm. I love that. He says, I'm not going to be ashamed in anything that comes by my way, but that with all boldness, as always, so Christ shall be magnified in my body, mm. whether it is by life or by death. You notice he says, with all boldness, mm. I'm going to magnify Christ. And you see, yeah. that's the key there. You know, it doesn't matter what comes your way. Who you are magnifying in your life is so important. Yeah. It could be yourself or it could be Christ. But today you can be assured that when Christ is magnified through you, people are going to see you confident. They're going to see you bold because that's a yeah. characteristic of the Lord. 
boldness. Yeah, and our confidence and our boldness in the Lord affects the people around us. Yeah. In, um, you know, there's so many things you can learn in the life of Paul mm. because he wrote, you know, majority of the New Testament. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just his experiences, but also his confidence in the Lord yeah. that can be seen. That's right. In Philippians 1, was 12, the same chapter, it says, the trials and the hardships that he faced, he says, the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, mm. so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Mm. And Paul was at this time in prison writing mm. all this. Yeah. And he was going in and out of prison sometimes. Mm. And he says, all these things that have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus. Yeah, I mean, just imagine, Paul, he's in a prison and he's writing such amazing letters. Yeah. He's saying, you know, and there's another place where he says, rejoice in the Lord, be joyful. And then another place he says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Yeah. Because his assurance was from the inside. Mm. He, he decided it and determined, it doesn't matter what comes my way. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be confident in the Lord. Mm. And you can be the same way. Mm. It doesn't matter what's around you. Once you have this assurance of Jesus living on the inside of you, you will rise up with confidence. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Let's look at another verse and see some other people who were confident in the midst of, you know, threatening situations. Let's go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. We're going to start reading from verse 29. And at this point, we see that the disciples, you know, they were facing some really threatening situations. People were coming and persecuting them because they were preaching in the name of Jesus. But that didn't stop them. See what verse 29 says. At this moment, they started to pray. When people came and brought persecution, started mm. saying, you can't speak in Jesus' name anymore. Mm. They started to pray these kind of prayers. Let's see it. Verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto their servants boldness that we may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus. Mm. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You notice it says, they spoke the word with boldness. Mm. They didn't speak it in a weak manner. You know, yeah. well, God, we don't know what to do. They rose up boldly in the midst yeah. of that situation. Yeah. And sometimes you have yeah. to go, you know, every situation doesn't present itself comfortable. Mm. But we have to go against those uncomfortable situations and rise up in mm. confidence. And it's, uh, you know, something that you have to do purposefully. Yeah. You can't do it, you know, just when everything is going fine. Mm. Because even here, these people, these disciples, they prayed. And, you know, it was through the Holy Spirit that they were able to, you know, speak the word of God with all boldness. That was their assurance. Mm. And, you know, it says here in the, in the first part, they prayed, Lord, we want to speak your word boldly. Mm. They didn't say, Lord, we're going to give up. This is too hard. This situation will never turn around. They yeah. said, God, we're going to speak it even more with confidence. I that love that. That makes a difference. To speak that makes God's a difference. Word. Yeah. And in the midst of all these threatening situations, persecution, they said, God, we're going to rise up boldly. Mm. We're not going to let these things stop us from preaching the gospel. Yeah. Because the enemy out there, he wants you to stop preaching the word. That's right. He wants to put you in a situation where, where it's like all over. You got to give up. Mm. But today we're here to encourage you. You don't have to give up on life. Right. You can rise up boldly in any situation, just like these people. Mm. They were in prison cells and some of them, you know, they faced some really bad tormenting situations. Oh, yeah. But they rose up boldly mm. and they spoke God's word with boldness. Mm. So you may be asking the question, how do I rise up boldly in confidence? Well, even as we saw the first scripture in Philippians 1.6, it says you can be confident that what God has begun in you, He will finish it. Mm. And you can make that like a prayer. And you can say, Lord, I thank you that I'm confident that this work that you have begun in me, you will complete it. You will finish it. And you won't give up on me. You will never leave me nor forsake me. Mm. That's a really good prayer to pray. Yeah. 
a bold prayer. <coughs> so in any situation, you can believe that God's standing with you, no matter what mm. you face. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, He's a good God. And so we see, according to these scriptures, there is so much to, you know, talk about when it comes to rising up with confidence. Even as these people prayed, they said, Lord, we want to speak your word boldly. We don't want to just speak it. We want to rise up there with confidence. Mm. We want them to see that you <coughs> are living on the inside of us. Mm. And you can make that a prayer as well. You know, you can say, Lord, I thank you that I'm going to speak your word with boldness in mm. my heart. You know, I love these words where it says, you know, Jesus said in his word that the Lord is my helper. Mm. You know, he, he says that directly to us so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Yeah. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Mm. Let's just quickly look at that. Okay. Yeah, that's really encouraging. <clears throat> so let's turn to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 13. We're going to start with verse 6. It says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What shall man do unto me? You know, the previous verse, Jesus tells us, he says in verse 5, the last part, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the reason you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Mm. And right now you <clears throat> may be asking the question, you know, how am I going to rise up with confidence? Because I'm still feeling a lot of fear inside of me. Bible says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. There is an answer for every situation that you face. Mm. When fear rises up against you in your mind, <clears throat> trying to torment you, you can say boldly in the name of Jesus. According to 2 Timothy 1.7, mm. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but yeah. of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. Yeah, you can look at your mind and say, mind, God has made you sound. He has made you whole. I got the mind of Christ. Yeah. I don't have to let fear do torment me anymore because God is on my side. And it's a good yeah. thing to talk to ourselves mm. and you know because we're the first yeah. person who hears the mm. words that come out of our mouth exactly so when we um, say the word of God to ourselves there's power in it and you don't have to worry about you know people <clears throat> make fun of you and say what are you saying you're talking to yourself yeah well you don't have to fear that you can say well yeah. I got to speak to myself because I think we have many inner voices on the inside of us they try to control us and try to torment us yeah. But we can come and stand firmly and say, no, in Jesus' name, I make a firm decision. Yeah. I'm not going to let fear control me any longer. That's right. This verse says, so that I may boldly say, it didn't say I'm going to weakly say, mm -hmm. you know, this, it's not a word, <coughs> but I'm not going to say it in, yeah, I'm not going to say it in fear. I'm going to boldly proclaim that the Lord is my helper. Mm -hmm. I will not be afraid what man shall do unto me. Yeah. God is your helper. Today you can remember that. You might be, you know, doing something, maybe it's a project or maybe it's something you have to face the next day and you feel like you just don't have any help, you know, you're not secure enough. This is a good verse to pray over yourself. You can say, Lord, you are my helper. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Many people in the scriptures we see, sometimes they had to stand alone as one person. For example, we see Paul here, he's in prison, all alone, you know, nobody's with him. But he didn't, you know, he didn't feel that presence of fear. He felt the presence of God <coughs> with him. That's why he rose mm. up and he said, I'm confident that what God has started, he will complete. That's right. This prison cell is not going to keep me bound. Mm. I'm going to still proclaim the word of God boldly, and, no matter the situation. And, you know, in Philippians 3, Paul says, you know, to rejoice in the Lord and he yeah. says to write these same things again it's not grievous for me yeah but he says for you it is safe mm. so when we keep hearing these words of boldness and confidence it's for our safety yeah. and for our good and you know sometimes you may say well what if I don't feel like rejoicing <clears throat> well it didn't say about feeling like you know it says yeah. rise up rejoice in the Lord yeah. your feelings will eventually catch up yeah. so you don't have to worry about well I don't feel confident Eventually, as you start proclaiming these scriptures, your body will start to respond. That's right. Because our body responds to the words that we speak. Mm. And so when you start saying, I'm confident that what God has begun, He will finish. Because in the middle, as you go on with the Lord, the enemy will try to bring thoughts and situations mm. against you. 
but you don't have to fear. You don't have to let it control you any longer. Mm. And today we want to encourage you and pray with you. Pray a bold prayer with you in whatever situation that you're facing. You can believe the Lord is your helper. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you right now. Lord, we thank you that you said you are our helper. We will not be afraid what man can do unto us. We thank you, Lord, that you said you are our shepherd. You lead us beside the still waters. And even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not fear for you are standing with us. We thank you for your protection, for your help and for your courage. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now rise up with confidence. Amen.